Hello, gentlemen. Will Gasper, Hospice of Michigan in the Cadillac office. And this uh, recording will be a recap of Tuesday, November 2nd, Men Overcoming Loss that we had. And we had uh, 10 gentlemen join us. If, but before I get into the recap, I want to read a poem by John Polo. It's called Sit Down and Shut Up. And it's he wrote it in 2017 on February 14th. So Valentine's Day, of course. And the subtitle um, that he put is For Every Widowed Person Who Has Ever Been Judged. It's called Sit Up and Shut Sit Down and Shut Up. Okay, here we go. Sit down and shut up. Serious question. Is your spouse six feet under? Oh, wait. Are they a pile of ashes? No, they aren't. Wow. Okay, cool. Then sit down and shut up. My wife's name was Michelle. She's gone. Once a widow, always a widow. Once a widower, always a widower. No, this isn't a plea for sympathy. No, this isn't even an angry post. This is an honest post. This is a passionate post. This is a real post. Sit down and shut up. Unless you watched your spouse die, unless you buried your spouse, unless you burned your spouse, sit down and shut up. Do not tell a widow or widower how they should be living. Do not tell a widow or widower how they should be acting. And please, for the love of all that is right in the world, please do not tell a widow or widower when they should try to love again. I am sick of seeing widows and widowers vilified for trying to find companionship again, for trying to find love again, hell, for trying to find anything again. We are lost souls on a journey to find ourselves again. And you, you want to judge? You? Do you know the courage it takes to go back out there after your spouse has died? After you watch them die of cancer or a massive heart attack or suicide? After you watch them fall to 60 pounds, having bowel movements on themselves, having horrific hallucinations so bad that seeing them like that has that strangled your soul? soul. After you watch them fall to their knees and clutch their chest and take their last breath. After you walked in on their body dead because they took their own life. You have no idea. Do you have any idea how badly the loss of a spouse messes with your mind, with your heart, with your soul? No, you don't. So sit down and shut up. You're not allowed to judge. You are not allowed to pass judgment as you drive home to your spouse. You are not allowed to pass judgment as you eat dinner with your spouse. You are not allowed to pass judgment as you cuddle up on the couch with your spouse. You are not allowed to pass judgment as you have sexy, sexy time with your spouse. You are not allowed to pass judgment sit down and shut up. Stop judging. Stop thinking that you will know what the hell you are talking about because you do not. Your life wasn't ripped from you. Your future wasn't destroyed. Sit down and shut up. This was not our choice. This was not a breakup. Stop comparing. This was not a divorce. Stop comparing. This is not the idea, uh, not the loss of a grandpa. Stop comparing. This is not the loss of Uncle Thomas. Stop comparing. And for heaven's sakes, this was not the loss of your damn cat. Stop comparing. This was a loss of a soulmate. Our love, our other half, our life, our future. Sit down and shut up. The next time you see a widow or widower try, widower try to pick themselves up, 
dust themselves off and get back out there, you have two choices. You can either sit down and shut up or you can give them a standing ovation for their heart, for their courage, for their bravery. Those are the only two options and your only two options because you do not know. Rant over, mic drop. Gentlemen, that's how we started the uh, evening. And what followed was a very, very engaged discussion about the reaction to how some people around us act or respond to our loss. And those who have not joined the club of losing a spouse just can't understand that that's a club they'd never want to be in anyway. But they certainly are free to offer advice, offer suggestions, and they just don't know what they're talking about. But the men that joined us that night that came up with a few rules. One was have the courage to say no to anything that would make you uncomfortable, whether it was an invitation to a party or it was going out to, uh, you know, play a round of golf. If you're not ready, say no. If you're not ready, especially as we go into these holidays, if you're not ready to say yes to a party invitation or whatever it is, even from family, you, it's okay to say no. But when you are ready and you want to try it, leave yourself a way out. In other words, if you're going to a party, puck out in the street. That way, nobody's blocking you in. There's no reason to, you know, go around and ask people to back up their cars so that you can get out. So always leave yourself a way out. This gentleman that suggested this said that he was, he would just tell people, not feeling well, I'm just going to go home. Thank you very much for the invitation. And boom, he's out of there. And people never question why you feel if why you're feeling bad you just say just not feeling well and they won't question that and then the third uh suggestion from this gentleman is to be honest with the people that you're closest to they will accept it they won't judge you they won't criticize you they'll just accept it for what it is most all the guys have heard these sort of things that uh, Mr. Polo talks about in his uh, poem. And nobody uh, has been there um, who doesn't understand what somebody else is going through. The, the people, the guys all have sympathy and empathy, probably more important empathy for anyone else who has lost their spouse. And like the poem says, you can't compare the divorce or a um, loss of Uncle, Uncle Thomas or even Grandpa to what they've gone through with losing their spouse. Now, another gentleman talked about he's already survived the first Christmas, the first Thanksgiving without his wife and second um, holiday set of holidays is coming up now, just around the corner. Thanksgiving, of course, first, and then you have Christmas and all the uh, parties and the invites that are out there. Perhaps New Year's Eve uh, would be pretty special to some guys and, and their spouses before their spouses died, but Maybe not so much the second time around. 
But one thing that one gentleman did say was that he spent a lot of time and a lot of energy trying to figure out how he was going to get through the holidays. And for, uh, for him, he took the bull by the horns for the first Thanksgiving and he actually prepared dinner, the whole dinner in his own house for his son and, and daughter-in-law and their two children. And he was proud of it. Of course, he said, he had no idea of how this turkey tasted, how the stuffing tasted. Hell, he didn't even remember if he actually had gravy on the menu. All he remembered was he felt bad because he missed his wife. So the second time around, he says, he's gonna be a little bit more proactive about dealing with those anticipated moments and actually let it happen if he lets it happen at all, but he'll let it happen the way it happens, being in the moment, not worrying about the past because that's history, not worrying about the, the future because that's a mystery, but living in the moment, living for each minute of each day and appreciating what he's been given, how he's been blessed, even though the sadness of the loss of his wife pervades a lots and lots of his time about how much he misses his wife each and every day. Another gentleman said, and we discussed this before on these recordings, that the absence of presence was so totally overwhelming last Christmas, last holiday season, that he missed, another gentleman said, he missed his wife, plain and simple. Another gentleman said, and we've talked about this before, that a death will change your address book. And by that, he meant that he was hurt by the in inaction of many, many people who thought, who he thought would circle the wagons around him and comfort him and be there to have a cup of coffee, to just console him, just to listen. And that actually hurt more than anyone that did say something or do something. So again, he pointed out, you're really gonna find out who your friends are who your true friends are when there's a loss of your spouse. So the secondary loss that another gentleman talked about was that as they are looking to the future, this, this was a man that lost his wife eight, just, just eight weeks ago. He's realized that now that things have settled down a bit, that all their um, retirement plans, all their destination, vacation spot plans, cruises, and different things that they were going to do now that they were both retired, were out the window. What's the use of, of going on a cruise if it's all by yourself? He just didn't see any point in that. But most of the gentlemen that were sharing their hopes, talking about, they talked about realizing and believing that you can get through those moments of intense grief. They may knock you to your knees, but you'll get through it. And perhaps next time around, you know that maybe it's not so bad. Maybe it doesn't last as long. Sure, it still hurts, but maybe it won't hurt as long 
um, as a in a period time wise. But the loneliness and the depression, there's no getting around all that stuff. The emptiness of a of the house when you come in from maybe doing something outside, maybe going to the grocery store, if you have the strength for that. And you will, if you don't now, you will. But the emptiness of coming home to an empty house, the just overwhelming sense of, again, absence of presence. The wife is no longer there. Their wife no longer is doing the cooking, the laundry, the cleaning. All that's got to be done by someone else now. And most often it's, is the surviving uh, husband. Another gentleman questioned God's plan. Really, God, what's your plan? I don't agree with your plan here. But my faith tells me to trust you, Lord. So that's the prayer every day. To help understand or to trust that God has a plan and even they don't agree with it. There's got to be some reason. Some reason down the road. And perhaps we'll never find out. Not this side of heaven anyway. And another man, just to kind of summarize it. Said grief is a crazy and winding road to recovery. And that doesn't mean that you're going to forget about your spouse. That doesn't mean that your love has nowhere to go. There's a school of thought that even while the physical presence has been ended, that the spiritual connection and the love that you shared with your spouse is still there. There's a belief that they're still watching over you. They're, they're encouraging you to keep your chin up and just do the best you can each and every day. And that they will be re reunited again uh, someday. So gentlemen, with the holidays coming up, please take gentle care of yourself. Know and, and remember that no is a complete sentence and it's okay to say no. So for Hospice of Michigan, for Wes Lawton, David Keller, Matt Boylet, and myself, take care of yourself and we'll see you on the 16th of November, six o'clock. Take care.